everyone, welcome to another episode of Funny Money. My name is Caleb Williams. And I'm Dominic Syracuse. And in today's video, we're going to talk about buying a house. Yes. Okay? And we're not going to go into whether you should buy a house or not, because I know some of us live <laughs> in places that you right. can't buy anything. Right. It's impossible. Regularly. I live, I say this all the time. Uh, I'm I'm an actor, I'm a stand-up, and I live in the mecca of these things, which is Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I used to think starving artists were broke because they had to suffer for their craft. And then I realized they're broke because they live in Los Angeles. Yeah. It's so expensive. So a common, 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 common thing that I'm seeing is people see financial success as being debt-free. Yes, like I, absolutely. I intentionally did not tell him anything about this episode. I'm horrified right now. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> but but let me let me ask you this. Okay. If you if you had a mortgage, yes. you bought a house, yes. you have debt. I do, a okay. lot, a We're lot. Do you want to tee me up? Go sure. Me, okay. So this is what happened. So you're okay. So put me okay. So right now, we have a half a million dollars, which I know can't get you much in LA. Yeah, but that's a that's a nice house. Uh, in most places, in the most country. places, LA, half a million dollars. Depending on the part of town, you're looking at like a two bedroom, one and a half bath. Okay, so you have a half a million dollars, okay. and it over we're gonna say that it interest rates four percent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So over three hundred and sixty months. Okay. Um, your payment is gonna be two thousand three hundred and eighty seven dollars. Per month. Per month. Okay. For that house. All right. Now, this is this is what you can see down here. You yeah. S first month, you have a monthly balance of half a million. Yep. This is the principal. This is the principal payment. Yep. This is the interest. Yep. Total payment, and then the end end balance is a little bit lower, but a lot of that went to interest. Okay. And if you go, you see you see all this like the balance is going down. Yeah. You can see the interest is going down. Right. You can see more money is going to principal. Yep. And at the end of thirty years. Okay. You make that last payment and you're paid off house, you're debt free, you have your house, Woo! no more payments. Free and clear. How long did that take me? 360 months? Yeah, okay. so 30, 30 years. 30 years, okay. got it. Now, now the question is, mm -hmm. that that half a million dollar house cost you an additional $359,000. So a total net cumulative cost of that loan is $859,000. Oh my word, okay. okay. Now, uh -huh. if I said, listen, uh -huh. what if we could just, if you could pay off that house with cash, like it, let's say you have a half a million bucks on right. the side. I was, I was literally just about to ask this question. I was gonna say, well, what if I just, I literally got half a million bucks. The I question is, if you had cash, yeah. half a million bucks, would you pay cash for this house? I I would. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's. Okay. So, so you gonna check it out. So the the question is, yep. I can't help but smile because you fell into my trap. <laughs> I, I like I have I know I know I'm doing okay. No, not not only would I, I've been planning on this. You know, my business is taking off. Things are working for me. I'm going. I can't wait till I got enough money to just buy a house for me Be and my because, son straight up. Because because I want to be debt free. I don't want to be making those monthly payments. Yes. Yes. And you you don't want to pay an extra three hundred. Three hundred and fifty nine thousand yeah, right. dollars. Okay. Correct. Okay. So here's here's the deal. Remember when we talked about everything has a short term and long term effect? Yes. Yes. I could make the argument that you, by making this decision, it could be one of the dumbest things that you ever do. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. What? Okay. And here's why. Hit everything me. has a cost. We're gonna take a look at a fifteen year mortgage, but we're okay. also but we're, I'm just gonna look. I'm just gonna say assume uh -huh. if you have if you have half a million dollars in an account. Okay. The question that I have for you is what kind of rate of return would you like to assume for the future? Like, okay. we use 7% sometimes, sometimes yeah. we use 4%. Okay. Like, what, what kind of rate of return do you want to do you want to use in this scenario, assuming that we're if we're not putting in our house, it's going somewhere else, and that activity will grow in value. Oh, I see. So it's not like you're saying. spending it on sushi. Got right? it, right, Which, right, by right. Way, if you don't get that reference, <laughs> go watch the dumb things that we buy or whatever we're calling this video. <laughs> yeah, go watch um, the previous episode. Um, so, so if I understand the question right, and by the way, we want to be on the screen right yep, now. Okay. Yep. So, so if I understand the question right, you're saying, um, what kind of rate of return would I want on the house? Yep. As in, what what could I get from that versus putting the five hundred thousand elsewhere? Is yes. that what you're asking? Yes. Um, I mean, I guess. You know, for me, it's, it's more of an emotional thing. It's more yeah. like I want a place for my son and I to make memories, a place where you can bring okay, so friends. Okay, so let me rephrase this that question. It's how, what kind of return on your money yeah. can you get in an uh, in another investment? Like if I you're see. With me. Let sure, me, sure. Let me answer that for you. Yeah, hit me. We're going to say 4% is like the floor. Okay. We're going to say we can't do anything better than 4%, meaning you're Got the it. worst business owner of all time. Fair. I've heard that before. I'm the worst guy when it comes to money of all time. <laughs> And you just have a very 
mediocre, barely keeping up with inflation rate of return. Rate of return. Okay. Four percent. Four percent. So we're gonna take a half a million dollars. Yeah. See, I'm just gonna blow this up just slightly. Okay. Okay. And so you take a half a million bucks. Yeah. This is your savings account. Yep. Okay, we're gonna say you can earn four percent. Okay. So what you're doing is you're paying half a million dollars that's going towards the house you saved on all that interest. Right. Your money's stuck in your house. Right. You can't do anything. You can't so do anything with you it. save interest, right? Right. Okay. Three hundred and sixty thousand. So, 000, so right? over three hundred and sixty year uh, months. months. You got years right now. Um yeah, let's go annual. Um one point six million dollars. <sighs> okay, so let's let's rephrase. You in your infinite wisdom. Yes. We're taking that half a million bucks. Uh-huh. Put it towards your house. Right. And you would have saved $359,000 over 30 years. Right. Now, to be fair. Yep. You would now have payments okay. that you could invest. Right. And if you took those 100% payments mm -hmm. and put it into a 4% return. Right. That means you can't spend any of it. Right. You, it would be the exact same. Now, we know human behavior. There's no way that you would do right, that. Right. So you'd pay cash. You'd feel really good about yourself. You would save almost $400,000 in interest. Right. But that money, remember going back to what that yep. what that money do? The potential, the, the opportunity. Yes. Right? Half a million dollars in an account earning only 4%. Mm. Dom, like that, that's so freaking easy to do. Right, right. Would be over $1.6 million. So, thanks to me. Right. By not listening to your gut, you have <laughs> 1.3 million extra dollars just wow. by that. Okay. Wow. I want to open that up because now I want to analyze different loan opportunities, and I yeah. want to I want to break down actually the math. No, behind I'm, I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad you're saying this because then now you now that you've completely crushed my worldview. <laughs> it makes sense, right? It, no, it does make sense. It, it absolutely makes sense. But now the question is: is how? I mean, is there an opportunity to get a better deal on? A house, or, or would yeah. you just say like? That, remember the how versus what? Yes. The what is always you can negotiate. You, I would recommend people negotiating. Once you find the decision, we want to ask the question: What's the most efficient way? They're two separate decisions. Right. A lot of people lump them into one. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. The the other thing is, let's say you paid cash for your house. Yes. A lot of people say, "Well, I want to just be secure. I want to be more in control. Mm -hmm. and I just feel good about if I pay cash for a yeah. house." Okay. You have a half a million bucks. You pay cash for a house. Mm -hmm. Then you become disabled. You know who doesn't like to loan money to people? <laughs> yeah. Banks when right. you're disabled. When you're disabled, yeah. Because yeah. they're looking at your member, they see you as an asset. Right. They're like, yeah, Dom's ability to repay me doesn't seem high. Wow. Another another area that you need money, you lose your job. Right. Bad things happen That's, in the economy. Th these are literally things I'm thinking as you're saying it. Like, because if I if I you know pay cash or yep. whatever, you know, S stick with me here. Okay. You have a paid off house and you have no money. What's more important to you, food? Cash flow, money, or paid off house? Food, of course. So when I think of not just monetarily, right. but I would make the argument that you could be way more in control if you use a mortgage properly. Okay. So then, Caleb, how does one use a mortgage properly? Okay, so so here we go. So half a million dollars, 4% right here. Yeah. Over 360 months. Yes. This is your payment. Yeah. Okay. And um, what we're saying is you put this into a mortgage, and over 30 years, yes, you have some additional interest, mm -hmm. $359,000 in additional interest, you have a house. Right. Okay. So so the, a lot of people will say this, and, and you probably, you, you may you may have like got calls, and it's all about refinancing. They can right. say, uh, yes. I can get you a lower interest rate I'm if you pay right. it off quicker. Yes, yes. Okay. So we, we have to understand, okay, like, would we actually want to do this? And and so let's, let's look at a 50-year... Um, let's look at a 15-year loan. So I'm okay. doing loan two, putting half a million dollars in. Yeah. Uh, that's 50000 Let's put one more zero. Um, let's say you can earn, now the loan payment is 3.5%. Great. Okay. And the monthly payment is, um, well, we're doing 180 months for 15 years. Right. Okay. And you'll sign that your payment is three hundred or 3000 Five hundred and seventy-four dollars. Okay. Got that? Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about pros and cons. The the pro is lower interest. Yep. You're debt free in fifteen years. Which is nice. And there you go. Yeah. Okay. That's so, the pro. So the the con is your payment more. is higher. It's more. So yeah. your money is getting directed into a mortgage. Right. Directed into a real estate property, which I would make the argument that 
that's not the best place to flow your money because okay. you don't necessarily have a ton of control and there's the the house is going to go up or down in value and it doesn't really matter how you pay for it right okay right. um so what we're going to do is all if we just look at pure math yes if we just look at pure math the 15 year mortgage may be ahead because what you're doing is you you're you're paid off in 15 years and if you take this whole payment put it towards an investment mm -hmm. and earn four percent yes you could be at the same same exact place um where if you just if you just pay for your pay wow. for your mortgage and invest the difference wow okay so let's but let's let's actually look at the difference here okay um so you have a you have a payment of mm -hmm. three hundred and five seven four four and forty one cents got it okay at four percent over 15 years right you have eight hundred and eighty two thousand dollars okay that's that's the if you paid off your house in 15 mm -hmm. years and you put this whole payment into an investment that could earn four percent yes you would you would have over eight hundred and eighty two thousand dollars that's makes sense great yeah but who's actually going to do that right nobody right if you take the difference okay. take the difference between this number yep. i'm going to get my um and you you take you subtract it with the 30-year mortgage uh, let me go here i'm gonna go to financial calculator here so if we take the difference and we clear this out so if we take three three thousand five hundred and seventy four dollars and forty one cents mm -hmm. and we subtract it by the payment over here right. the 30 year two two three eight seven and eight cents we get the difference of one thousand okay one hundred and eighty seven bucks yes so we take this i'll copy this yep uh put this into here okay so just mathematically yeah because you're paying extra in interest here wow. in a perfect world the 15-year mortgage is slightly ahead yeah because it's just you're you're, it's just a different in the cost of capital. Right. But it's very minimal. Right. Very okay. minimal. But what I want to do is I want to start adding human behavior. Oh. Oh. And I also want to ask, I also want to ask the question is why 4%? Like, why are we making the decision 4%? Yeah. Because if you actually know what you're doing, why would you want to go out? Why would you want to go on hold for 15 years of your life and then just start earning 4%? Yeah, yeah. What I'm all about is maximizing what you currently have now and in the future. Mm -hmm. And if both of these if both of these loans were the exact interest rate, you'd see the the it's identical. 15 and 30 year mortgage is identical when you look at the pure cost. Wow. What I would say is if you could get in the habit of taking a 15 year mortgage and taking the payment. Mhm. Mm Getting a thirty-year mortgage and investing the difference between what you're sending the mortgage payment and then what you're getting yourself, and and you start investing in yourself, you start doing some of the things that we talk about. And let's say you can earn a seven percent over your lifetime. Now, now it's a totally oh different. Oh gosh! Ballgame. Totally different. Look ballgame. at that future value. That's that's almost double. So, and and as I'm talking, this video could be hard to follow. Sure. Be, to just be just just because there's a lot of numbers going on. And, right. Um. I'm going to make another video on my page that walks this, walks through this maybe with a PowerPoint so, so that we can get super, super clear on, on the numbers. The point of the matter is this, loan one, loan two, a lot of times the, 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 the t like what we want to do is become debt free. We don't want to pay interest. And I'm mm. saying interest is one side of the equation. Right. We also have to look at what kind of control we want, what our money could grow alternatively. And right. we saw if you would have paid cash for a car, it could have cost you $1.3 million. Right. Right. It's, these are just examples of every decision you make makes it has a consequence. A lot of people are romantic about wanting to be debt free. Yeah. What I want you to be is I want you to be super obsessed about making good decisions mm. and then financing that or being efficient with how you make those decisions. I see. And I'm saying a mortgage, a lot of times a mortgage can get you to buy something that you shouldn't. Uh -huh. But if you actually are clear on what you want, a mortgage could allow you to reinvest, be in more control, start your business, have more just quite frankly, have more control over the next, over your money and over your life the next 30 years. It's just a different way to think about your money. And I just always want you thinking about what are the alternative ways. If my money wasn't in my house, where could it be um, elsewhere? I also say that in my book, chapter three, I talk about the house decision. 
Mm. The and that you can go to andasset.com. You can check out the links below. But like I talk about buying your house, um, different ways, different philosophies on how you can pay your, for your house. Mm. And I talk about this a lot more succinctly and talk a lot about just just a lot about liquidity, about inflation, about interest rates, about just really comparing apples to apples. Wow. You know what you did in this video? You know what you did? You brought down the house. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. <laughs> you <laughs> no, were sitting on that joke yeah, yeah, for way too I was, long. Yeah, I was waiting like the whole time. Two minutes into the video, you're like, I was okay. wait, I knew, I knew it was coming. <laughs> I couldn't wait to hit you with it. No, uh, but in all seriousness, that's 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 game changing. Yeah, that that changes the way you think about. Uh, I think about the whole the whole process. Yep, which it's, is awesome. It's not just the interest that you pay; it's the result that you're getting, short term and long term. Yes, yep. that's so. Interesting. How many dad jokes can I throw? <laughs> How many dad jokes can I throw out before this video is done? No. <laughs> In all seriousness, so uh, aside from your book, where's another place people can check out if check. they want if they want to get more information about this specifically about yeah. the house. Uh, this, I, this I'm, I'm committed to this YouTube channel. This the reason why you're on here is we're going to talk about some topics and laugh and, yeah. and have it be funny. And I love making fun of you. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's, it's my favorite part as well. So, so this YouTube channel will be the place to continue to learn. So thank you for being here and thank you for sharing. Yeah. And then, I, I mean, you can just check out the links below, but Better Wealth is the company that I have the pleasure of running and we are helping people. We're setting people financially free all, all day long. And it's, it's fun. Long. And a lot of this stuff is like being efficient in the decisions like this make a big, big difference, especially when we're talking about millions of dollars right. on one decision. Right. You start compounding your car, your house, and other decisions, we have to understand that it all adds up. And, and I think the point that I wanted to make in this video, and I'm not sure I did the best job explaining it, but like every decision is you have to think about your money more as multidimensional versus one. One kind of thing. Instead of being debt free and that being the solution, you have to think about what if you could reinvest your money? What if you could do this? What happens if you get disabled? What happens if you lose your job? Like how can we how can we just create flexibility? How can we have our money continue to grow? How can we have that control? I love it. I love it. I love it too. Take care. <laughs>